Hi, this is Kara, and this is DIY on the house. We are going to show you today how to weave hot pad holders. This is actually a two-part video. We've done it separately, but we're going to release them at the same time. If you don't have the loom, check out the video that we have in the link below, but we're going to get started, and I just love making these. It is a really quick and fun craft, and it makes a great gift. To get your fabric ready for your rag uh, project, uh, whether it's a hot pad holder or a rug, uh, you need to have fabric, and it can be any kind of fabric. It can be cotton, uh, it can be sheets, it can be flannel. I would uh, stay away from something that's too thick like denim. That it, I find that that doesn't uh, tighten up real well. Uh, but what you need to do is you need to prepare your strips in about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, give or take some. And you can make these strips can be in any length. They can be as little as 10 to 12 inches up to the width of the fabric. The way I like to uh, get my fabric together is if I have time, I will stand at my quilting mat and I will just zip about an inch and a half strip. It does not have to be precise. This is a very forgiving project. So if, uh, if it's a little uh, shallow on one end, don't worry about it. Just as long as you have about an inch to inch and a half width. If you're not around a cutting mat or maybe you're on a road trip and you want to uh, rip some fabric and I have to say, I have done miles and miles of ripping of fabric on road trips and uh, Ross really loves that noise of ripping fabric in his ear. But it's a great time, a great way to pass the time. So you just rip a fabric, or a strip about an inch and a half wide. And uh, let me now show you how you get your fabric ready to start weaving. When you get ready to do your project, you're gonna need to have what they call warping fabric. And that is the fabric that you uh, uh, go up and down on your loom and then later you'll weave through it. So on the on this little project here it's the green that's showing on the end and for that you will want, see here's the, the nails on the loom that you're going to be putting this warping fabric on and I'll show you in a second how you do that. But you're going to be doing such a continuous motion you'll want to con uh, attach your fabric strips together for your warping. And a really simple way to do that, you take both uh, uh, end from each piece, you lay it on top of each other, you fold it over, oh, roughly um, about an inch maybe, do a little snip on both of them. Now you're going to take them apart. So you have a snip here and you have a snip here. Put those snips on top of each other and bring the end through and now you have I like sometimes they do get bound up I like to make it as small as a let's try that there we go okay so now we have a knot and I just for the warping I have a continuous flow of my strips for that in a ball. The fabric that you're going to use to go back and forth, you don't have to, and I would advise not putting those continuous. So here's a ball that I've started. Here's another piece I just add to the ball. And here's another piece. And see, this piece is only, what, maybe 12 inches long, uh, and so it'll be really good for uh, the project. So prepare your fabric for the warping on a hot pad holder. You're going to need probably uh, 240, 250 inches of strips uh, continuously uh, attached to each other, and then you can just have a um, combination of the colors you want uh, in variety of lengths for the uh, horizontal weaving. So let me get you started on how to warp the loom. 
to start with you for uh, warping you're going to need to have a loop on the end of your fabric that'll go over your nail so give yourself a tail of about oh six eight inches there and tie a knot in your warping fabric nothing fancy you just don't want it to be a slip knot to where it's going to be sliding around so make a little knot here give it a tug now you have a loop that is about three or four inches long and you place that on the nail on one or the other end it doesn't matter whichever way you want to make it flow at this point I don't have my uh, side bars in because that you don't need them and they'll be in the way so with um, some pretty good um, tautness or tightness whatever the right term is you don't want it super tight but uh, you don't want it loosey-goosey either so you're just going to simply go back and forth around your nails and again now you can see here's a knot let me stop there here's a knot that of where we continuously put the fabric together you can see now why since this motion is a continuous back and forth having your strips attached end for end makes this pretty fast instead of having to go two or three nails stopping picking up your scissors okay getting down to the end here I find these are shorter nails just putting your finger on the top of the one you're wrapping around keeps your fabric down and keeps it nice and tight so I'm going to come back to this end and we need to make another loop to go around that end nail so I'm going to give myself a good um, 10 inches there to play with maybe a little more cut off uh, enough to now I'm wrapping around and I'm going to tie a knot here give it a nice little tug and I can say 100% of the time that I do this that knot slides so then I just slide it back so we're all good this tail you're going to want to go ahead and leave a, that length there on the beginning um, you have a tail here as well don't trim those right now because what will happen is when we weave back and forth we're going to weave around those ends uh, to make it nice and, and secure this is the stage when your project starts taking shape i love this part where you can start making choices on your color patterns go ahead at this point and slide in your sticks on each side if you don't have shish kebab sticks you can use eighth inch dowel rods you can use wire like we show in our rug video the this is such a small project i found that my little sticks did wiggle and giggle around so i'm going to take a little bit of piece of uh, painters tape here and just for the first row or two after that it's really secure but just for the first row or two I am just going to tape that stick into place on both sides to start weaving you have your rods and again I have it taped just because it's a little wiggly in the beginning you have one strip of fabric and it can be any length so we're going to take one end of your fabric and you're going to put it underneath your rod and you're going to bring it up through the gap underneath your first nail so at this point you're just bringing up one take your other end and you put it down as you put it down bring it up underneath the next nail so let me get this guy out of the way so we have went down on that gap and up on the gap on your next nail at this point you don't want to have your ends even um, because you're going to be joining fabric to them you don't want your knots to be lining up all the time you want them to be random so you have went down and up on the gap so in between there you have two strips of fabric each time so now you have your first tail and you're going to go down in the same one that the other one came up in and you're going to come up in the next gap again you have two pieces of fabric in between it kind of push them up a little take your other tail go down and back up the gap Can you see I'm getting close to the end of this piece of fabric here so I'm going to push up my row 
And just as we had done on preparing the warping fabric, I am going to attach my next color. So I'm going to take a new strip, different color, different print, and going to lay them on top of each other, fold them both back, and put a snip, about a half inch little snip. So now you have a snip there, and you have a snip here. Lay them on top of each other end for end. So this one, this tail is going to come through and make a, a continuous strip of fabric. So now you can continue. Gonna slow down here so you can see how to go around an end. You at this point, I haven't quite got to the second and uh, the last one with this other strip. So I'm going to go down through there and bring it under my rod. So I have went down into this gap and I brought it under the rod. This one, this other tail, it has to come back up. So I've already I've already went down to the end, bring it around underneath the rod and back up in that same hole. So I'm going to show that again. I'm going to take this back Okay, so we have your two pieces here. You got to the end. You're going to go down into your next one and under your rod and back over. This one is going to go over the rod, back under, and up in that hole. So we'll, I'll show you the, uh, the other end because that has to probably be one of the trickier things to get your head around. So now, where uh, this one, this ending here is underneath your rod. It goes down in your first hole, back up in the second. So there you have, again, you still have your two strips of fabric. So down and back up. I like this darker gray showing out. So I'm going to, as I uh, pull it through, intentionally have the dark on the exterior. Down to going around again. So here we are, back to the same situation. You have come up. And now you, with the gray, I need to go down. I'm going to go down underneath the rod with the cream. I need to go around the rod and back up in the same hole as the gray. Okay, last time I'm going to show you how to go around the end and then I'm going to go a few rows and then show you one more thing that you'll need to pay attention to. So we came around and now it's the gray's turn to go under. I'm going to go ahead and get a crochet hook and pull in here. It's the cream turn to go over and under. I'm going to push it through this time with a crochet hook. Gray's turn to come up and over and into the next one. As you can see, we had an eyelet there. When we make the looms, we make the eyelets even with each other. So when I'm weaving across and I'm on top, I'm, I'm on the far side of this eyelet. When I get over to this side, I want to make sure I'm also on the far side of the eyelet and that just makes me know that my rows are even. I went another couple rows. Now I am here to the right where this knot is that was uh, created when we made a loop to go over the nail. So remember we put the loop over here, I tied a knot, I said to keep the tail there. At this point, 
you have been going through this split with your weaving fabric. That split is getting ready to disappear, so no big deal. We have come through our split. We're going to come up. Now we are no longer going to go through this split. We are going to go down on the, uh, the gap and come up. Now you only have one piece of fabric there. So no, uh, no longer are you going to have these two. So on the, the other one, you're going to come down. You're not going to come up beat this split anymore. You're going to come up with just one in between. So come now, if you continue, you will see, and at this point, maybe I shouldn't have had two colors of blue to show you with, but you have came down and back up. Now you're back to the rhythm of having two between your weaving. So if you have any questions on how to make that happen or if I didn't um, explain it right, uh, go ahead and comment down below. I've went down and across and now we have our two tails, which are the are our two weaving fabrics, which are the dark gray and the light gray at this point. And then this teal is the tail from the knot. So now when I am getting ready to go with my light gray here, I'm going to go down and around the rod, but I'm also going to go over the teal tail. Okay, I have continued and I am now down to my last row. When you have about a finger width um, from the nails, you uh, can't really squeeze another one in there without really raking your knuckles and getting it stuck. So if there's um, just a finger width left, you can start your last row and this is um, how you can make sure that your project isn't going to fall apart. So we're coming down to the end and it is time for the gray to go under, the light gray to go under, and when it comes over this time it is going to go in between the fabric uh, uh, below the nail. So up until now we have been going around two fabrics. Now you're going to go in between that fabric with the gray. The light gray I should say. So we're going to stick that to the back. So I'm going to stick my crochet hook in and draw up. I say that but it won't come up. There we go. Draw up the dark gray. So I have went around the, with the light gray and I brought it up and over and through and the dark gray went come um, went around and came up in between that. I've changed the position of how I'm holding the loom. I now have it squeezed between my knees and it is uh, running up and down um, instead of laying flat on my legs because this is much easier at this point to put in your crochet hook and pull back. Put in your crochet hook and bring it forward. Put in your crochet hook, take that one back. Getting down to the end here, I'm going to continue the same rhythm. I'm going to pull this one to the back. I'm on my last nail and I'm going to pull it to the front. I'm going to pull this one to the back. And I'm going to go around. We, if we cut this off right now, it would just unravel and it would not be a pretty sight. So I'm going to go around the pole one more time. So I'm going to stick my crochet hook around the back and draw that back piece forward because it needs to come around your rod. It needs to come around the rod here and go back in that hole. This is just securing your project so it doesn't unravel. I've made rugs and uh, they've just they've held up really good in the wash because you just need to finish it off tight. Uh, and you can check out our videos on uh, the rugs that we've made. Okay, here I've pulled that one to the back. This one has to come around the rod 
and it needs to, so I don't know if you can see my crochet hook here. So I'm going to pull him to the back. And it doesn't help that I ended up with the same color in the end here to show you. So I've pulled this one to the back. It needs to come forward into that first loop as well. So there's a lot of fabric in that first loop, but just pull it through. So now at this point you have one on the back and one on the front, and we're going to continue for two more stitches. So I'm going to bring the back one to the front and the front one to the back. One last nail, so I'm going to bring that one forward and I'm going to leave it forward so that we can fasten off our project. Okay, so now we have both pieces are to the front. I'm going to just simply tie a pretty tight little knot here and cut a good, I don't know, three or four inch tail. So I have the tails and I just want to weave them in to your um, rows down below so that they are hidden and won't be a distraction. So there's one. I'm going to go one more. Each tail, uh, I maybe go through two other stitches. Here's my other tail, and we're going to pick a couple different stitches and pull it through. So there's one. Just have to fuss with it to get it to pull through. So there's one, and I'm going to do one more right here. So you have your knot where we tied them both together. I fed them through a couple stitches and just give it a little quarter inch tail there and you have it all ready to remove. I have the project back up on the table so hopefully we can see this a little bit better. Now you can just pull out your rods. The rods are to keep it square uh, because you can see how much tension is on this. If you didn't have that rod, your uh, hot pad would not be a perfect square. And so we're going to take out our edge uh, sticks and you just pull it off of the loom. Oh, I love it. So here you have your project. And at this point, your warp is on the end. Um, and it, there's just a, a small gap to your uh, first row on each end. So just put your fingernails into it and just pull the row to that warping. Oh, I love, love, love the way this turned out. And I know uh, that my friend is just going to think that is just perfect, that it matches uh, the rug that I made her, which I think I still have in here. Oh, yes, I did. Look at this is the rug um, that I had previously made. And again, we have the tutorial on how to make a rug and how to make the loom for that, including how to put backing on it. But now I have a matching hot pad holder to go with it. I just think it makes a fantastic set. Now that you have mastered how to make the hot pad holder, Go ahead and check out the other video we have on how to make a rug. There's even a video on how to make a loom that is bigger for the rug. And you're just going to be amazed. The possibilities are endless. So as always, thank you so much for joining DIY on the House. Thumbs up and subscribe down below and come back for more videos. Mm -hmm.